my dear friend, should we marry this kampong tree with musang king or black thorn? Please leave your comment below. This episode is dedicated to Mr. Manesh. Mr. Manesh is an old friend from school and is now living in India. He has been wanting to learn how to graph durian, but due to, due to the pandemics, he's not able to visit my farms. So I'm filming this to share my shallow experience on how to graph a durian tree. So let's follow me virtually and I will show you how to graph a durian tree. Grafting is the art of joining two plants into one. In most cases, it involves a scion and a rootstock. Human mankind has been doing grafting for thousands of years. For example, uh, grape farmers and apple farmers, they have, been, they have been doing this for hundreds of years and has been practicing for a long time. Today, the most users of grafting is asexual propagation. It means we are able to clone a superior varieties over and over again. For example, uh, black thorn, as you can see at the back, and musang king, as you can see on the left. There are three main types of grafting. There are stem grafting, bud grafting, and cleft grafting. All these three grafting methods are equally efficient. They are all correct and they have their own strength and weaknesses. My dear friend, should we graph this kampong tree with musang king or black thorn? Which should we graph? To graph musang king because of the musang king crisis from Pahang or black thorn because of, of the better price than musang king? Please leave your comment below. For the illustration of today's videos, I'll be showing you stem grafting methods on a kampong tree with a black thorn. For the other type of grafting methods, I will be showing you on a different episode. There are many many types of graftings and they are all correct again. And all the methods is merely to increase the successful chance of grafting. The boil down seven core steps of during grafting they are Step number one, tool preparations. Step number two, a rootstock health check. Step number three, bud selections. Select a good bud. And step four, sion cutting and also rootstock cutting. Step number five, scion insertions and also a rootstock sealing. And then step number six, we have seal opening and also rootstock pruning. And then followed by the last step, step 7 is physical supporting. Step 1, tool preparations. A cutting knife. A cutting knife like this is okay. And then followed by a sealing tape. Sealing tape, something like this is okay. There are two types of this sealing tape on, on the market. They are a uh, stretchable type and also a non-stretchable type. They are both okay to use. Step 2. Rootstock health check. Be sure the kampong tree is healthy. A healthy durian leaf should be dark green in color. As you can see over here. The new shoots are also fresh. An unhealthy kampong tree can be observed from a yellowish leaf and also uh, the new shoots uh, appear to dry out. Now, these rootstock trees look okay and healthy. We will graph on this tree later on. Step number three, bud selections. This is a black thorn tree. We need to find some healthy vegetative buds. But where are they? Those buds are on the tips of leaf stalks. Look carefully. You can see almost all leaf stalks has one bud. Occasionally you can see buds at shoots from 
roots and stalks. You see the buds are very small and fragile. It is very well protected by the leaf stalks from strong winds and animal attacks. Yes, the magics are at the buds. Just one single bud like this can grow into a big tree like this. If you have time, do try standing below a tree. You can observe and understand how a small bud develops into a young shoot and from a young shoot mature into a branch. You can see the bud growth progressively over here. From a small bud become a small shoot with small branch and young leaf. As the leaf matures, the new bud will protrude out from the leaf stalks and the process repeat again and again. When selecting buds, search for buds from a vegetative branch. Vegetative branch are usually less than two years old before turning into fruiting branch. You can see the outer side or vegetative branch. The inner sides are matured fruiting branch. Now, within the vegetative branch, look for medium maturity stems meaning their stems are not too young like new fresh shoots or too old like fruiting branch. When you spot a suitable bud cluster, check the bud's maturity. Hope not too short or not too long. Now cut down the selected bud stems. Prune away the leaf blades but leave the leaf stalks partially. The leaf stalks is helpful for bud protection later on when we wrap this stem on kampong tree with plastic tapes. Step 4 Rootstock cutting and stem cutting Now we are back into this kampong tree. Now we need to plan and execute a way to combine this black thorn stem into this kampong tree rootstock wood. Again, there are many many methods out there how to cut the stem and the rootstock but generally the guideline is to contact the cambium layer for both the stem and the rootstock. Typically the durian cambium layer is at the second layer after the outer skins. The middle layer is xylem and polym. We can talk about that next time. Take the scion and choose for suitable grafting locations. There are a few considerations. Again, similar to choosing a scion, we seek where the rootstock skin is not too old or not too young. As you can see, at the bottom side, it's usually older. And then as it goes up, it will go younger and younger. We choose the skin is not too old or too young to ease the grafting process. Now, cut away the branch or nearby grafting locations to avoid rainwater runoff the graft to minimize the fungi contaminations. Now, we will cut this rootstock wood, slide down the outer skin this way, and then pull the skin down about 2 inches. Observe the smooth white cambium layer. Press the skin back now to avoid excessive evaporations and foreign material contaminations since now we are going to cut the scion. Now back to the scion. We will pick about 2-3 to three buds cluster at this stem. Cut away the rest of the scion. Now slide the bottom of scion about 1 inch. This part needs some practice to ensure a smooth and steady straight cut. If possible, do it in one go. This is to ensure perfect alignment and contact of scion cambium layer with rootstock cambium layer. The depth of cut must be around 50% of stem thickness, where the dark green portion of xylem and polem is exposed. Sometimes the cutting depth is too shallow or too deep, the xylem and the polem is not exposed. Be careful to keep the cut surface clean. Avoid touching the cut surface with the finger. Now, at the back of the stem, cut a short chamfer about quarter inch. 
this short chamfer surface is to accommodate the rootstock skin later on. If unsatisfied, we can always use another scion plaster and repeat the cutting process. Step number 5. Scion insertions and connection sealing. Now, put out the rootstock skin and insert the cut scion early on. Cut away the excessive skin. Ensure the residual skin is enough to cover the short chamfer surface. Get the sealing tape to start wrapping from below. Ensure the first few layers are tight and waterproof. Slowly wrap and work upwards. When reaching the scion buds area, avoid wrapping it too tight to destroy the buds. At the same time, it's tight enough to ensure it is still waterproof. If water enters, it will have fungi problem and the graft will not be successful. Make a tie on top. Record the date. We will be opening the seal around 28 to 30 days later on. Step 6. Seal opening and rootstock pruning. Today, we are going to open the seal that we have grafted a month ago. It so happens in this farm, ABC farm number 2, we have a batch of durian just grafted 30 days ago. So we will be opening today and share it with you guys. Untie the wrap from the top. Slowly untie all sealing tape while not destroying the bud. Now inspect the graft stem. If the stem appears to be greenish, the graft is considered successful. If the stem appears to be blackish, the graft is considered unsuccessful. We can use back the sealant tape to tie at the bottom graft area. If the graft is successful, we can proceed with stock pruning. Prune off from the top of new shoots. On top of the grafted area, prune away the side branch but leave about one to two leaves. This pruning action is to encourage the new grafted buds to start growing where there is less competition for nutrients and waters. Step 7. Physical Supporting About another month later on, the grafted buds will become a small shoot. We can recycle back the sealant tape below. Loosely tie the shoot to get it growing upwards. As a continual action, we will prune the top half of the rootstock. Just like last month, we will leave about one to two leaves on each side branch. After that is done, we will continue to prune the bottom half of rootstock. Just a light pruning will be enough. For the subsequent months, a stronger physical support is needed. We may use PVC pipes or a bamboo. In this example, we are using a 2 inch by 2 inch wood lock as a support because this is a hilly area and open time is subjected to a strong wind. We would like to give as much support as possible. Open time, we will leave this support for about 1 to 2 years. However, in the interval time frames, we will loosen and tighten back the ropes to avoid over tighten on the stems. This concludes the traditional stem grafting methods. In about 3 year times, these grafted trees will start bearing fruits. Enjoy! Next, I would like to share you a quick progressive growth of a grafted black thorn tree. This tree has been grafted about 6 months ago.
this tree has been grafted about one year ago. This tree has been grafted about two years ago. This tree has been grafted about three years ago. It has started bearing fruit during the last season. Thank you for watching.